Very well, welcome back. It's Gordon Bennett TV, 1300, 1 p.m. here at our Gordon Bennett TV studio. It is the library of the Balloon Museum here in Albuquerque. Great location to be, iconic location, and two iconic balloon pilots with me in the studio. Ladies and gentlemen, Troy Bradley, duration record, distance records in balloons, 6,700 miles, 160 hours up there. John Petron, Deputy Event Director. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hey, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, it's nice awesome. to see you. How's it going downstairs? Everything all right down there? Everything's uh, going well with the, the race so far. It looks like uh, they're, they're uh, off to a good start. And we're uh, just telling you now, it's 16 hours and 30 minutes since the start of the race. Johnny, you're based downstairs, aren't you, in the, uh, the what they call it, headquarters? Don't forget the microphone up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, down in the command center. We've been watching the balloons since they took off, um, checking the weather, checking the airspace, and keeping tabs on, on their progress across uh, Texas now. And we're kind of keeping our tabs on you a little bit. You can see we've got a camera down there yeah. in, the, in the control center <laughs> to see what's going on. So shall we have a look at what we've got at the moment? And currently in third place, we've got Great Britain, 407 kilometers. Second place, Germany, 1, 416. Out in the lead, Germany, 3 on 416. 21. Should we have a look at some of the uh, trajectories and see what's happening on the screen right now with the with the pilots? See what we've got there. Have a look there, bro. John, and tell us what's happening. Yeah, this is pretty exciting. Last night, uh, yesterday, the, the, or over the last couple of days, we really thought the balloons were going to be going a lot slower. Yeah. Um, we thought they were going to be lingering around the state of New Mexico all day today. So it's really exciting to see. They took off and they went up to the north, and, and most of them bent around Santa Fe before the elevation change. Um, a few of them had to go a little higher than planned. You can see, that, see the ones that were closer to Santa Fe. Their altitudes were much higher. So the... The strategy I think a lot of the teams wanted was to stay as low as you could and get through there. And then they, they really caught some nice speed all the way across uh, through uh, Tucumcari, all the, way, all the way into Texas. So I'm guessing that all of the teams are smiling right now with the, with the speed that they're flying. What do you think, Troy? What's your thoughts on what happened overnight? That's a, that's a very typical flow out of Albuquerque, actually. To, once you get on the other side of the uh, Sandia Mountains, to have the, uh, the flow, kind of a low-level nocturnal jet that'll kind of start pushing you out to the east or, or northeast. So they, they, they stepped into something that happens quite frequently and, uh, and predictably. So I'm glad that they're in it and moving forward because I think it's going to be a great race. We've got loads of great content coming to you today. We've got videos from the baskets from many of the teams. Let's catch up with Germany 2. So, and this is the outcome of the breakfast. Looking great. I think the horseradish will kick our whatever. Noses. <laughs> Noses. Beautiful scenery. But the sun's already roasting us so we got our sun protection tent time for breakfast good breakfast there in the uh, basket what was your breakfast of choice gentlemen when you're flying uh i i was uh bagels i like bagels cream cheese um uh, granola bars uh, pretty basic stuff what you always want to do is make sure that you take something that you know you're going to eat. Uh, that's that's uh, just to keep uh, you know keep uh, the calories and and staying hydrated is really important. Like they said, it's uh, it's so hot up there. Once you get there, you're just roasting in the sun. So you definitely want to stay well hydrated and um, and have uh, have food that you like to eat because you got plenty of uh, plenty of time. <laughs> Is there a standard amount of water the teams are taking, John, or is it is it, is it up to themselves? Uh, up to themselves. We require them to carry a certain amount of water uh, as ballast in yeah. case they're flying over populated areas or any time we wouldn't want to uh, ballast sand out. But uh, some teams keep that separate, but uh, there's, never, there's no reason not to have too much water on board. Uh, any thoughts from the launch last night? It seemed to go quite smooth. Man, uh, once we got everybody inflated and, and the weather, the winds calmed down a little bit, we were really excited about how everybody, all the teams were just spectacular working with us. We got them lined up, the wind shifted a little bit and we launched a little bit more uh, off to the west, but we got 16 balloons in less than an hour is yeah. pretty incredible and we weren't rushing. It was everybody got their national anthem and their time on the stage and uh, I, I think it was pretty magical. Some of the teams seem to be moving around quite a bit on the podium there. Some of them were quite steady and some of them had a lot of work going on. Yeah. There was a little bit of wind that that kicked in, but very manageable. So uh, when you get a balloon up on the stage that light, you don't have any extra sand holding you down. So one person takes their hand off and it, it adjusts the weight a little bit. So, But everybody handled it uh, very professionally and they were all very, very smooth, pretty launches. Well, let's check in with our next video. We've got USA 1 for you. Let's have a look. 
Here we are. Part of the Coupe Aeronautique. Gordon Bennett. Hello from the basket of USA One. Good morning. Good morning. Here we are. Part of the Coupe Aeronautique. Gordon Bennett. Started in 1906. It is steeped in such rich traditions. We're so excited to be here. This is amazing. Part of the uh, part of the excitement for me is uh, carrying on the traditions of some of the older balloonists that uh, always ate well in their baskets, and so we uh, we like to do the same. And we're enjoying a breakfast of smoked salmon, some cheese, uh, crackers, uh, bananas, and Brenda, maybe something you had to drink. Oh my God! I had my very first cup of hot coffee in a gas balloon and over 20 flights. <laughs> I've never had hot coffee in a gas balloon and was so excited. I think Noah had to take pictures because he was even excited for me. Very excited it's, for you. There's nothing better than being able to have your hands around a hot cup of coffee and then to drink a delicious hot cup of coffee. I said, okay, I'm ready to go for another five days. I'm good. <laughs> Absolutely. So, bon voyage. Have a good day, everybody. Is going to be uh, slipping on that banana peel. <laughs> Man, they're eating a lot better than I ever did in a gas plant. <laughs> we had granola mix and or trail mix and candy bars and Mountain Dew, I think. <laughs> Some people watching might be wondering about the safety element of heating things up and using flames with uh, hydrogen above your head. Talk about the safety element of that. Um, so with the, the hydrogen, the, the gas is staying up. It's lighter than air, obviously, so it's staying above your head. And unless you have the proper uh, air-gas mixture, it is not flammable. And you're uh, down below it where you're not having anything that's going to be ignited. And so it's a very safe thing to, to be doing that. You know, with hydrogen, unfortunately, so many people remember the Hindenburg. That seems to be their only point of reference to flying hydrogen. And we've done it for 100 years since that it's uh, flown quite well and, uh, and, and safely. Um, so the, the fabrics are built for this. Um, the precautions are taken, and really there is no concern as far as uh, having a, an explosion on board. Yeah, and at, at this point, uh, they're also flying with the appendix closed. They're probably sure. at a pressure altitude, so the gas is, is sealed, sealed off, off. Yeah. Um, so there's no, there's no gas mixing yeah. at that point. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. extremely yeah. safe. All right, let's have a look at some content now from the team from, team from Spain. Spain won. Hello, uh, this is Angel. Hi. Um, my name is Anulfo. We are Team Spain One, uh, competing in the Gordon Bennett race starting from Albuquerque this year. And I'm going to show you around a little bit of where we are. Uh, we are in, in the northern part of Texas, uh, heading the town of Amarillo. Uh, we wanted to show you a little bit the where we are going to stay for the next uh, uh, two or three days. This special aircraft, which is a gas balloon ready for a long distance flight. Um, as you can see here, we have uh, a map of the central states of the of the US, which gives us a, a good overall idea of where we're going to go. And this is a very important part of our equipment, which is the, the radio and the transponder, which are mandatory to be in contact with the air traffic controllers during all the time. Uh, this is the GPS. Uh, this also gives us the, um, the position and the heading where we are, where we're going and where we want to go. This is the electric distributor. Uh, this is also a very important thing. This is the boiler, so we are able to cook a little bit during the during the trip. And here we have the oxygen because we in some of the flights we are flying quite high and we need to to carry oxygen. We have also a beam light in case we need to, to land during the night, uh, an emergency locator. And around here we have the ballast bags. As you see, they are color coded. So we can easily count how much ballast we have left for for the whole flight. Okay. And on top of that is the balloon, as you can see. This is a special gift, it has a special thing for us, it was a gift. And this is the curtain we use when the when it's too cold or too hot, sometimes we, we put it over and give us a good uh, cover uh, for, for us, which is much needed after a long distance flight. And this is what we see, this is, uh, we already passed the, the mountains of uh, Santa Fe. And we are actually in the, in, in the plains, heading 
to the east, to the valley of Mississippi. So, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Hello. Hello. Hi there. <laughs> Here we are. Over Texas, with a very strong sun. We had to put this cover in our simple spacecraft to avoid to be burned by the sun. It is even worse than in our Spanish beaches. See you soon. Bye. Really interesting to see the equipment that we've got on board now with everything that we've got there that we saw with the Spanish team from the early Gordon minutes. The, the equipment's changed a lot. Talk a bit about that. Oh, it's, it's changed tremendously. We uh, uh, we have the ability to communicate and to be tracked and, and uh, in real time. Uh, the early Gordon Bennett's, uh, so many of them, I mean, they'd, they'd uh, have stories of actually flying over farmhouses and yelling, where am I? You know, I mean, because they'd lost uh, sight. If they, if they were above clouds through the night, they may not even know where they were when they came down. And so uh, a lot of it was dead reckoning and the, kind of the pilotage, just, uh, you know, kind of doing some math and looking at uh, even triangulating off of towns to say, you know, well, that's uh, there's one town in Ohio and another one, and we must be at this point, you know. So, uh, so using just the same type of technology, only it's now electronic, uh, you had to use your mind and map a little bit more. So it was a lot more uh, intensive for the pilots to try to figure out where they were and what they needed to do. Uh, imagine in 1906 taking off, no radios, no weather, no fast cars, I mean, nothing. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they took off and I think they came back months and months and months yeah. later if they did come back. Yeah. Wow. So the adventure spirit, uh, every time we launch the balloons out, it makes me respect what they did way back then even that much more because it's, nothing like the, the the risks that that they they took the risks back then we don't take those risks these days the guys were talking about their, their sandbags and the different colors color coded can you tell me a bit about that yeah you always want to know how much ballast you have left that's that's the key to the, the gas balloon so you want to know how much you have available um if you have all one color it's uh, sometimes you can get lost you know as, as you get through the flight you start to get a little bit delusional and you know the the sleep deprivation and so you want to be able to make an easy count of something so the bags weigh the same it's just a matter of how many do you still have left and then they can do the calculations as to can they make it through that third night or, or whatever they're uh, looking for or can they go to altitude and and still have ballast left for landing so uh, a lot of mental calculations are going on in their head and and they want to make it as easy as possible to have that uh, identifiable as to what they have left yeah really interesting stuff isn't it yeah yeah gas balloon it really is a, a mathematician game while you're up there and you've got a, every pilot has a, a strategy or a, a safety number with how many bags they need left to go through the next night or like troy said it's a it's a mathematical calculation of how much sand it's going to take to dump out to go up to seventeen thousand feet so it's just an ongoing calculation to figure out what's the best speed and time and altitude well let's check in with the team from my hometowns of great britain Oh, did, did you think Good talking? morning. Oh, we see. Yeah. Here we are. Yes. Up in the balloon. We've uh, just fitted a nice sunshade to keep us in the shade. It's uh, doing the job. Nice and cool. Um, and we're going to Amarillo. Yeah. You know the way, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> As everybody does. And um, yeah, so we're just uh, cruising along. We've got a we nice a little bit of speed. Night. Have a good night. Yeah. Lots of sleep. Not. Uh, yeah, use a little bit of sand, but yes. um, that was to be expected. Um, and we'll just see how today pans out. But it's looking really nice. And we've got quite a nice speed direction. Um, and we'll just see how the day, see how the day goes. Yeah, basically. keep you updated. Yeah. It's really interesting stuff. I know the space agencies put a lot of effort and work into putting people together for long durations. You know, how does it affect you psychologically? I mean, some of the durations that you've done, Troy, I mean, you're with another person in that closed environment. How does it work? You have to find somebody that you're going to get along with, definitely. Um, you know, most of the personalities of, of the pilots are going to be type A. Um, and so they're, they're, they're going to want their way and the other guys are going to want their way. But you discuss all these things in advance and, uh, and you really try to work as a team, go through all the what ifs and, and, and scenarios that you possibly can before you ever get in the air because you really need to be on the same page once it comes to that point. And, uh, and you've got a whole team. It's not just the pilots on board. You're going to have a meteorological support team and you have your ground crew. And so there's a whole host of people that are involved. And so really you have to make sure the team is a team. And um, 
the best way to do that is the, is the advanced preparation, making sure that you, and most of these people have known each other for years and, and know that they can get along in that, that confined space. But it is uh, a tight space and you get to know each other very well. Hey, John, I mean, you must have a, you guys have got a bigger insight into most people when we think about going to Mars, a six month mission. You know, you've got an idea what it's going to be like to be confined like that. Yeah, 62 hours is as long as I've ever been in a gas balloon, and you do need to uh, select your co-pilot or, or your pilot very carefully and make sure it's somebody you want to spend that much time with. I don't, yeah. I don't know if I could spend 160 hours in a balloon with Troy. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be problematic. Yeah, really. <laughs> well, are you doing all right with these 20 minutes we're here? Yeah, there you go. There you this go. is enough. <laughs> <laughs> we're done. Let's check in with the team from Switzerland and Swiss One. Hey, good uh, morning. Good this, morning. This is Rene. And this is Altasar. Uh, we are a, the crew of Switzerland One, hanging on at uh, 9,800 feet, just on top of a beautiful landscape uh, somewhere, uh, just crossed Route 66 um, and uh, Santa Rosa Highway. And yeah, we wanted to quickly give you an update on our last night. Um, exciting times, to be frank. Um, uh, until Santa Fe everything went well and then obviously the field split in two and we were part of the left group which had to uh, uh, battle with the mountains there and we had to cross the mountains uh, in very very turbulent air so we uh, had uh, turbulences, rotors um, several times which brought us even down to I would say 50-60 meters above ground that sometimes descending with 2.5, 2.8 meters so that was a, quite a, a challenging uh, a task, wasn't it, uh, uh, Rene? Yes, also the, the rotation is uh, very the strong. Rotors. Uh, the rotor uh, were very strong and, and yeah. And unpredictable and we couldn't see anything. It was pitch black dark uh, underneath, so we had our laser, uh, laser distance meter, which I'm just uh, here to show it to you. That's an instrument which looks like that. Uh, you know, which helps us to uh, measure distance uh, and altitudes up to uh, about 1,500 meters. So that helped us really, really through the night. Uh, we spent the whole night on that uh, thing and that saved our lives, I would say. Mm -hmm. So, but now uh, life is good. We had breakfast, everything good. We're sleeping, mm -hmm. we're preparing uh, for a quiet day. We know that this is going to be a bumbling day uh, up in the air. So we let the sun do its work and then we'll see what the evening and the night is going to bring. We have our discussions with our command center. The race just has started. So that's it, right? Right. Okay. okay. Rene, thank yeah. you so much for being here with me. I'm mm -hmm. really, really happy. Thank you so much. Same. <laughs> okay, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Wow, quite sobering information there, really thinking about that, guys. You know, that just goes to show all the balloons launched within an hour of each other and half of the teams are more reported in really calm skies, smooth sailing through the night. And then they're talking about bouncing through the mountains, um, barely being able to stay off the ground. And that's the difference that 100 feet of altitude can make in a different wind direction and speed. So it just goes to show just every decision that you make uh, moves forward and affects you in different ways. Troy? Yeah, no, it's, uh, it can be quite exciting flying out of here uh, because you do have the mountains to contend with to begin with, and uh, they wanted to keep a lower trajectory, and that was very difficult, uh, you know, when those conditions, because as you have the mountain, uh, the wind going over the top of the mountain, it wants to come down on the other side. So it's compressing as it's going up, and then it's going to go on the other side and kind of like water going over rocks in a river. It's going to want to come down on the other side. If you happen to be in the wrong position for that, it can be bringing you all the way back down, sometimes even spinning you back towards the mountain. And, uh, and it can be quite, uh, quite exciting and uh, terrifying at moments, actually. Yeah. So, um, no, I think they did a great job in getting through that. All, you know, you've got some of the best balloon pilots in the entire world that are doing this. Uh, you wouldn't want to put a novice out there doing it. Yeah, nighttime flying. And also some of the teams are using night vision goggles as well. You can see on the mm -hmm. screen there, that's one of the mm -hmm. views. I think it's from Germany 3, who were uh, Germany 2, actually. They're using the night vision there, just making mm -hmm. sure where they are. It's game on, eh? Yeah, night, night vision's a, a great uh, addition to things that, you know, we didn't have years ago as well. Um, we've used uh, radar altimeters. You've got the laser readers now. I mean, there's so many things that do help to protect you, and, uh, and the accuracy of the instrumentation is so much better. So if you, uh, if you really are following on a, uh, on a map and the, the GPS is, you know, reporting accurately, at least that gives you a good sense of where you really are. And it will give you altitude warnings on a lot of these systems yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah, the, the night vision is interesting. The last time I flew a gas balloon, 
uh, because the weather deteriorated, we landed about midnight around Tucumcari, and one pilot was flying the balloon and the other pilot was on the night vision goggles. And talk about putting trust in someone yeah. um, with your co-pilot. I mean, they're saying, they're, they're watching the terrain. We're trying to look for an open area that we can land the balloon and not damage it. And the other, you're almost flying blind and just putting that much faith and trust in your co-pilot. Yeah, every show we do, we're getting messages through about France 3 as well, with having to withdraw from the launch last night. Do we have any more information about what happened there with their equipment? I've heard nothing official, but it sure looked like the balloon lost gas while it was sitting there as yeah. the evening progressed. Um, what a disappointment. And we, my heart just goes out to that team. They, they came so far and I wanted nothing more than to be in this race with everybody else and how disappointing that has to be. I just, I just really feel for that team. Keep your interactions coming. We do like getting your comments, even though if you're outside of the show and you're watching this a little bit later. We do read all the comments and try and reply to them and try and answer them later on in the show as well. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel to keep up to date with all the action. You can follow all the tracking as this race progresses and continues. It gets exciting now, Troy. Oh, it gets very exciting. Now, it's a... Uh... It's a long horse race, and uh, and so anybody that's in the pack uh, has the chance to win. It doesn't mean where you're at at this point. It will change multiple times, I, I assure you. And tell me about in the command center, what's happening now? Are you just monitoring the situation, or look, tell me what's going on? Uh, we're trying to check in with the teams. Uh, they are uh, watching the airspace. They're watching the direction they're going. I think there are some airspace issues coming up into Texas. There's definitely some Air Force Base and restricted areas that the teams are looking at well ahead of time in, in case they need to try to maneuver up or down to, to maneuver around, because yeah. there are certain uh, parts of the airspace that you can't fly the gas balloon. And unfortunately, if you flew up too, you'd have to land before you got in, or it's, or it's big trouble um, so it's trying to stay ahead of that they're alerting Dallas if balloons are coming towards Dallas they're talking to the uh, to the airports and the control centers trying to just give a heads up that balloons and traffic are coming your way and then if they're there as a resource if a chase crew has a vehicle breakdown or needs a battery jump so they're 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 doing everything for the teams or as much as the teams need well good friends of the show Germany won lots of content coming down the line from them let's check in and see what they've been up to Hello world, hello balloon fans. So it's now 10.30 local time. We are quite stable, flying in low altitude, getting some speed, moving east, all is good. We are in Texas, uh, here's the airfield Bender, and uh, there's uh, two miles behind. And yeah, it's very stable, not too high. It is warm a little bit, the temperature in the, this moment is 30 degrees in the basket. All right, breakfast time. Our sun cover is installed to avoid us from the heating. So and now we, we put out some food. Hello again from Germany one. And uh, I want to show you and answer you one question. Um, so what happened when we need to go to toilet? And uh, as you can see over here is our bucket with toilet paper in and the other thing is we save our pee because now the sun is heating up and we don't need to throw ballast we will keep it for the night cooling so that's right that's good to know for previous combatant pilots okay have a bye, good bye. Time. bye 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 John, you got a bit of a good story about toilets in baskets? Well, maybe two of them. Is it ironic that the team that was eating horseradish is doing the story about uh, the, the toilet? <laughs> I don't know. But uh, last night as the deputy director, one of my jobs was before the balloons went right up on the podium, we did a quick equipment check. Yeah. And everybody's really tense and the adrenaline's flowing. So to break the mood for a lot of teams, I asked them if they remembered their altimeter, their transponder, and make sure you've got your toilet. And that usually got, uh, got everybody laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Any good stories from you? Uh, usually when I'm talking to anybody about uh, gas ballooning, that's always the first question as to yeah. uh, <laughs> what do you do up there. And so there again, uh, we talked about the uh, the personalities and meshing and all that, but also you have to be very comfortable to be in the front of the other person because you're uh, you're doing things that you would normally do uh, with a closed door. Yes, <laughs> that was quite true. Well, it's been a great show. Thanks for joining us, guys. I really oh. uh, appreciate your time. You know, it's very important for us to get people of your caliber in the studio and I know you've got other things to do we really appreciate it but I want to show you just one more bit of footage it's a bit of Americana for all the Europeans watching you know, and people from outside the states pure Americana and that sound of the American long distance train let's check it out <laughs> so that is the train in Texas close to Bender a lot of cows here 
very long, long train up here. Oh, and here you see our shadow. Great stuff, great stuff. Right. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for being here. We appreciate John, what you guys do. Troy, it. it's a Very pleasure. Much. We'll see you back here with the further updates of what's been happening this afternoon with our evening show at 8 p.m. We'll see you then.